Hi, this is Amber Rain Davis from NotableInc.com and I'm thrilled to be a guest designer today for Alta News March Stamp and Die Blog Hop and Giveaway. Be sure to check out my blog and leave a comment as I do have a giveaway sponsored by Alta New on my blog. Today we're going to be doing a project with the new wallpaper art stamp set and also the Enchanting Washes watercolor paper. Um, the, the flowers on this particular stamp set are gorgeous. They're large and to me they look like anemones. I'm not sure if that's what they actually are, but that's what they look like to me. And I wanted to create a white flower with those deep purpley centers. And so in order to achieve that, I'm gonna stamp this a little differently than what I normally do. I am going to start off with a piece of watercolor paper this paper is new to me. It is Saunders Waterford High White Paper. So I was really, and it's, I think it's a cold press. You can see that it's super textured. Um, so I'm gonna ink up my stamps with clear embossing ink about this paper. So I did some searching along, online to find out what is the whitest watercolor paper that's out there because it drives me crazy that watercolor paper is not white. I want my cards to be white. And so I did some searching this one was recommended on Google when I searched around. So I have Andromeda ink here and some sponge daubers and I'm just gonna ink up the centers there. Um, so this is the paper that I found and I this is the first time I'm using it. So I, I do see that it is definitely whiter than your typical watercolor paper. Um, because I'm not gonna do like real traditional watercolor in this particular card, I can't really tell you yet how it performs compared to others. So you can see the nice mix of color here. So what I have is Andromeda, and then I also used a different sponge dauber and put on some Desert Night so that we have a nice mix of color. So when you look at white anemones, and you can see that it was kind of dry because you're, you know, you don't have your nice juicy ink pad because you're putting it on with a sponge dauber. So what I did is I took my mini mister and I sprayed the ink dauber. So now I have a little bit of water on there. I didn't want to just like straight up spray the stamps because I didn't want water everywhere. I only wanted it on the center. So that's why I sprayed the daubers instead. So I'm just going to apply more ink until I get the coverage that I want. So if you look at those white anemones, it looks like they have black centers, but I don't know that they're really actually black. I, in my mind, to me, they're kind of like a dark blue with purples in there. And that's why I was going this route to try and build up my coverage, but have a mix of a couple different colors versus just a black in the center. Um, and I think that adds a little more interest in, and I really like how this was turning out. And if you look at it, you can kind of see that there's some veins, like I got some color on the veins and I really liked how that looked. So I'm taking um, my sponge jobbers and I kind of put some ink on the stamps a little bit. And I used an old Versamark ink pad, one that I, you just saw, it was kind of dirty looking. I didn't want to use my nice fresh one um, because I still have ink on these stamps. And so I love how that looks, what I'm pointing out right there. So I'm gonna do this a couple times until I get as much ink as I want in the stamp. So basically I just used whatever link ink was left over on those sponge jobbers and added it to the lines of the, of the stamp. So now what I'm gonna do is clear heat emboss it. So I've got clear embossing powder from Alta New and I'm just gonna cover it completely with that. So what I wanna do is trap all of that ink underneath this clear embossing powder because I do wanna add a little bit of shadow to these petals, but I don't, because this is a water-based ink that I use, these the dye inks, I don't wanna activate my inks. So I wanna trap it under the clear embossing powder so that stays exactly as it is right now. I hope that makes sense. I was also thinking, and you're gonna be able to see it here, that when you put the clear embossing on, it's actually gonna make these lines a little more vibrant, almost like a magnifying glass, and it's gonna it's gonna add a little more richness to them. So I, I absolutely love how this turned out. Now I do wish I had done a little more pigment on the leaves. The leaves turned out really, I mean, they're beautiful, they're subtle. Um, 
but you'll see with the papers that I that I chose that I don't know I just felt like they were a little light so I'm actually gonna add some paint to those so another note about this paper this paper is really thick and I don't know if you noticed but my heat tool is really close to my paper I'm not actually sure why I'm that close but this paper is not warping at all. Now, part of that is going to be because it's not really wet, right? We didn't use a lot of water at all. We really only used water on the centers. But I'm still surprised that it's not warping at all, particularly with my heat tool this close to it. And prior to me just now, I really wasn't moving it around too much either. So, so far, I think this is really nice paper. Um, and here is the, look at the shine. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I think it's so pretty. I I was really tempted to just leave it exactly like this. And so you're going to see I'm going to use, so I have the Altenew, um half pan set here and I have industrial diamond and what is that blue called? Is that Arctic blue? I'll have it linked below. Um, but like the lightest wash of these two. So I took these two colors, mixed them together, and then watered it down. And I am going to add just a touch of shadow. Like I still really wanted these flowers to be white. And I loved, I absolutely loved what was going on with the colors that I have embossed here. And I didn't want any kind of distraction from that. I really wanted all the focus to be on the centers and then those really nice, um, light colors for the outline so this really is the lightest shadow and when I'm done you're you're really barely going to be able to see it but I do think it makes a difference in terms of the dimension your eye sees versus not having done it at all so I have that same really light wash and I'm just going to add some shadows to the leaves and I start off by just doing one half of the leaves and leaving the other other side white and then as I, in the next scene, you'll see that I'll pick the, um, the pattern papers that I'm going to use. And I decide that the, the leaf without any pigment at all is just too light. And so I end up darkening this up. So I'm checking it out again because I can't stop looking at it. I just think it's really pretty. <laughs> and then here's where I decide, like once I have it on the paper, those leaves are too light. So I, uh, I grabbed the Desert Knight and I smushed that on my craft mat. And that was too blue. I felt like that was really blue. And so what I'm gonna do is get more of the Industrial Diamond. I'm gonna mix the Industrial Diamond with the Desert Knight over on my craft mat. And you can see the difference now in those two colors with them being next to each other. So it just grayed up a little bit, took a little of the, mm, saturation I guess it brought the saturation down um, with the gray and I think that blends a little more nicely so you can see I went much darker with these leaves on this darker paper um, this might be one of the first cards I've ever made where there's literally no black ink anywhere on the card there's no black in these cards which is weird I I'm not sure I've done that before anyhow this is desert night and I decided to trim those pieces of pattern paper down so that I could have a border on each edge. And I've got my sentiment on each edge. I picked two different kinds of paper and I did go ahead and clear heat emboss the sentiment so that those would be nice and shiny as well. I'm gonna back these two pieces of paper with sticky back fun foam in coordinating colors. I always put the sticky back to my card front so that when I put my glue on, you can't see the glue lines. And um, and maybe that's because I use too much glue. I don't know, you guys tell me. Or maybe you guys, I, well sometimes I use a uh, tape runner. In any case, I like the glue because it gives me more, more time to wiggle it around. So I'm just gonna pop the flowers up with dimensional squares. And same thing with the leaves. And then for the leaves, I'm going to add some smaller squares underneath. And I'm just gonna put dimensional adhesive under just a couple of the tips of the leaves and that's it. The rest of the leaf bunch will be straight to the cardstock. And then I actually added embellishment for the first time in I don't know how long. I added some dewdrops there. And here's the finished cards. I did add some splatter 
with my paint that I had left over on my craft mat. I got a little crazy with the splatter and I had to blot it up. I thought it had ruined the card, but it, I think it went well. So I ended up splattering the pattern paper as well because my splatter on the flower was like over the top, ridiculous. So I splattered the papers, the flowers, and everything to get that to blend in. And that's the finished cards. I hope that you guys enjoyed these, this project today. I hope that you maybe learned something new. I had never done this before. I'm sure it's not a new technique, but it was new to me and really inspired because again, I wanted to get those purpley dark blue centers of those anemones. So um, I will link a couple other videos at the end. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and definitely check out my blog post so that you can leave a comment and get entered in the giveaway. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day.